What's going on, guys? You're here with Nate. This is Crossbeats Production, and thank you for tuning into the channel. I want to go through some of the things that I like and dislike about the new update for Studio One Five. Um, this is more of a guess, uh, just a first impressions type video. Um, so hopefully, this is of some benefit to you. It has been quite some time since I've created content for my channel. Um, I've been away, I guess, two and a half months ish, and um, I really want to get back into it and uh, give you guys the content you've asked for in the past which is primarily Studio One content. Um, it's something that you guys probably have asked for the most on this channel, to be honest, and I don't really know why. But <laughs> anyway, it's because I guess I've been a big fan of Studio One for a long time. It's something I have been using for probably eight to 10 years-ish. And if you guys have been around for the channel for some time, you'd know that. Um, but anyway, let's get straight into this video. Hopefully it's of some benefit to you. Hopefully you enjoy this and let's go. All right, so we're here inside of Studio One and I'm just gonna cover off some of the things that I dislike first about the update. Um, there's not a whole lot that I dislike, to be honest. I really like Studio One and the workflow and the way it works um, compared to other DAWs out there. Um, there is 101 options out there. There's not actually that many, but um, you know, for example, Logic for one, um, that's one thing I've really used a lot of as well. Uh, it's kind of the DAW I started with when I first started music production and recording slash mixing and mastering. Um, and it's something that I'm familiar with. And some of the plugins inside of Logic, for example, the pitch correction, um, I'm talking about the vocal pitch correction tool that they have in there. That's called pitch shift or something like that. Whatever it is, uh, pitch correction that they have. Um, that's something that I'm still waiting for inside of Studio One. And I'm really surprised I'm actually very surprised, to be honest, that they didn't update the uh, the next plugins with some sort of pitch correction, like a live pitch correction. Um, you know, there's pitch correction that you can use like Melodyne and things like that for post. Um, but I want something that I can actually sing into like an auto-tune type plugin. And that doesn't exist here yet. I don't know why. Anyway, that's one of the gripes that I had with Studio One. Um, it's something that I have wanted for a long time, and that's something that I go to Logic for every single time I record vocals, um, because Studio One just doesn't have the plugin that I want to use. Uh, I, I could go out and get, you know, Auto Tune or plugins like that. There's a couple of companies that produce uh, plugins that are pitch correction uh, for live audio, but I would prefer to have a plugin like that. Uh, inside of Studio One that I can just pull up Studio One, record my vocals, throw in an instrumental track and start singing, rapping, whatever. Uh, but I can't do that. Anyway, that's one of the gripes that I had uh, when I first saw the, the new update that came out. And I'm just hoping that they, at least for this time, add it in. Um, it, it's something we deserve. Anyway, that's just one plugin. They can't obviously cover every single person's li likes or dislikes. Uh, or their requests, I should say. But anyway, that's one thing I would like to see. So uh, the next thing that I sort of disliked, uh, but semi-liked as well, I guess, is the um, the ability, what I do like about it, is the ability to use tape um, stretch. So a resampler based on tape uh, time. So if you're talking about that, we're looking at pitch and time correction uh, put together in the sound of tape. And I like how you can actually do that and the way it sounds on the um, the pitch correction. Like I'll just play this out to you. All right, so that is a organ. Let's time stretch that out to double time. That sounds cool. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of things you can do with that. And as far as, you know, time stretching and how good it sounds, I really do like that. What I don't like, though, is the fact that, again, um, so many people have requested like a tape stop effect. You can do it. It's not to say that you can't, but you have to go in and adjust uh, your tempo and stuff like that. It's just easier inside of Logic. You literally just put a fade on the end here, um, which is what I'm hoping somehow they can do it. I don't know if they can, but you literally fade like that. You can put a fade and then switch that to tape stop. It's so simple. Um, but anyway, that's just the way it is. Um, they haven't done it, done it like that inside of Studio One. Not a biggie. It's just a different way of doing it. But I'm hoping if they can somehow update it so you can actually just time stretch like that. 
Uh, so you can do your tape, tape ramp ups or, or stops, you know, that type of thing. You can do it with automation again, same sort of thing. But anyway, it's a small kind of uh, gripe there. Okay, let's get on to some of the things that I do like inside of Studio One um, because this this is not a cheap update. To be honest, it's 149 if you already had professional. If you're going from scratch, it's like 400 and something dollars. Um, and then there's a couple of DAWs out there like Ableton and... Um, I don't know. There's just a bunch. You know, Logic, if you had a computer that's an Apple, um, there is heaps of the options out there. Um, and if you're looking at this, I'm not saying Studio One is a bad DAW. It's definitely not. It's it's very good DAW as far as mixing, mastering, and all that kind of stuff. And production, it's catching up, definitely. But I feel like at this time in, in uh, the DAW land, where we're playing catch up with other things that already exist, out there now rather than actually being innovative uh in some aspects that uh other daws do but anyway that's that's my gripe there but things i like about uh this update are the the updated guis uh some of the plugins they have updated here as well uh, for example the analog delay that is a, a nice looking plug in there it's got the state state space um algorithm i guess you could call it uh, they're emulating certain analog delay here. It's kind of like a vintage analog delay by the looks of it. That's kind of cool there. I'd like to look into that more to see uh, what it's from or if it actually is emulating something there. But uh, that that's one thing. They've got a chorus as well. That's kind of a cool looking plugin. Uh, I used to use chorus a lot for different things and I still do, uh, especially since now I'm going to get more into the, I guess, production side of things again trying to get more content out for you guys so you can, uh, I guess, see what I do here. Um, the other things that I like to uh, see here, well, I have liked to have seen and seeing now is the compressor. I like the fact that it's been updated here and the fact that you can go in and change different things like the color of the actual compressor to white or to match the, the outside of you know your, your GUI here. Uh, but one thing I would like to see, though, again, is the, the fact that you could actually just make these larger or smaller. I don't know why they haven't done that yet. Uh, it's just something they, they decided to neglect again. Um, anyway, so that is something that would be cool if you could actually adjust this like you can in Logic or other DAWs or any third-party plugin that can do that. Um, that would be cool. Again, though, I'm not cry you know I'm not crying about the fact that they've updated. I really do like the way they're headed with this sort of stuff. It is looking good. Um, all of the plugins that they used to have, uh, including the the limiter, there has been updated. Uh, some of the things inside of the limiter are a different mode now, so you can have a different sounding limiter. So it allows you to uh, control the the style of limiting, and um, you know the, the kind of metering that you have here is all there. It's uh, it's looking good. They've still got the soft clipping function here, so you can do that as well. Um, but then they've got the envelope, so attack time is fast, normal, or slow, and then the le release time there as well. Uh, anyway, so I like the fact that they've uh, kind of just kept this metering thing because you can actually make this as long as you want, uh, and it allows you to sort of adjust as you like there. That's kind of a nice looking meter as well. That's kind of cool. Um, I believe you can actually do some stuff with that as well. I'll look into that later. Um, anyway, the multiband compressor, that is looking cool. Very good there. And I like the fact that they've updated some of the functions there as well. We'll get into some more in-depth stuff later on. I'd like to cover off a lot of stuff on this channel. I just really haven't had the time to do it. And I'm really apologetic of that, uh, that fact for you guys. Because I, I, you know... If you've been around here a long time, you know I do this sort of stuff, and this is Studio One, so this is something I like to cover a lot of. Anyway, so the updated uh, EQ, again, please allow it to be expanded so you can do larger EQ uh, on your screen. If you have an iMac, I've got a 5K screen here. I want to use some of the real estate. But anyway, uh, that is a nice-looking EQ now. It has a cool function here, which is it, it's already existed previously. But for example, uh, let me just let's take it off the main channel. And I'm going to add it to this thing and another one on this one. And I'm going to sidechain that and sidechain uh, this. So you can actually, again, you could do this before in the past. And I've shown you guys in the past how to do this. But if you don't know how to do this, you basically can see. Um, let's turn this down. So you can see the different frequencies that are happening at the same time. So this is really handy 
if you want to visually see the things that are conflicting in your mix, um, it allows you to, to do that. But this little button here, nobody really talked about it in the videos. Anyway, what it is, it's a freeze. So it allows you to freeze the two frequencies and now you can really just compare what's happening inside of the mix uh, visually and then you know really start to adjust um, to make up or, or you know take away if you need to uh, in the mix so I really do like the fact that they did that that really does uh, allow you to um, adjust your your mix accordingly visually as as far as what it sounds like and then you can see it sort of where things are conflicting uh, the other thing I liked on this update is the uh, low, low, <laughs> it's a linear phase low cut. Um, that's that's a nice addition to the uh, the EQ. I hope in the future as well, they'll put one on the top end frequencies. I don't know if they decided to do just the lows for now, uh, but that is cool. It's got the 80, 50 and 20 hertz. And then you can do soft to adjust the, um, the amplitude, or I should say the curve of the EQ cut. Uh, it's still got the low cut here, which is kind of cool. You can still do the octaves uh, by 24, 36, 48, and 6. That's a nice addition, though, that they've got the low, uh, the linear low cut there. Kind of cool. Uh, the metering, metering as well, that's kind of a nice update there. So you've got the different qualities, uh, sorry, high quality or just standard uh, on that as well. And the second thing that I really like about this is the, the piano down here. So it allows you to adjust uh, your, I guess, based on... You know, if you've got some frequencies here you want to take out and you know what the key is now based on the piano, you can kind of look at it and sort of spot um, the frequency and the key a lot easier than you used to be able to uh, based on what it used to look like. It was like this, basically. Uh, so I like that. I like they've added in that. One cool thing as well that would be really neat is if they could add sort of like, you know, what uh, FabFilter do, put like a little nodule on here so you can put, pull it along uh, with a piano. That would be awesome if they could do that. I don't know if that's possible, but you know, you can only hope for the best. <laughs> anyway, um, that's kind of a cool thing there. I really like it. I like the phase meter as well. That's starting to look a little bit more like ozone. Um, still basic, hey, but it still looks cool. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, the start of the the uh, updated stuff there. They've got a rotor here, uh, which is like an organ rotor. That's a nice update there. State space on that one again. And I'm sure that'll come in handy for the production side of things, which I'll start to use it later on in uh, future upcoming tutorials. Uh, uh, you know, all of these things have been updated for the most part. The the tuner, all that stuff, Xtrem. I'm going to, like I said, go through it. The spectrum meter, I'm sure there'd be some stuff in here. Uh, let's hope that there is. Can you expand it? Oh, you can expand it. So they can do it. They just didn't want to. Um, anyway, so you can expand this one, which you could always expand anyway. Um, and that's kind of cool. They've got the same sort of th thing. This, this actually had this piano thing here before. Um, so I guess they've added it to the EQ because people were saying, why not uh, put it in there? Uh, but that's sort of neat. I like that. That'll be cool to, to go through later on. I just really want to give you my first impressions on Studio One 5 as a whole. Um, just a brief overview of things that I've seen uh, so far and um, you know just go through some of it hopefully I you know a lot of people have tuned into my videos in the past about Studio One and uh, I think Studio One well PreSonus have got stuff out of it as well um, but I'm going to go through a whole bunch of stuff on this and uh, we'll get through all that in the future video catch you guys on the next one and as always love you guys and peace